Hello, Fiedelbogen here. To my fellow workers in the vineyard, worldwide, greetings. The title of today's talk is We've Got Feminism's Number. All right, we reject any method of studying feminism which commences by adopting the feminist worldview. That is why we consider the feminists themselves to be a poor source of knowledge about feminism. If you ask a feminist what feminism is, everything that person tells you will be feminist indoctrination into the feminist worldview. But we are not feminist, and feminism's worldview is not our own. So we decline to view the world through it. We start from the conviction that our own standpoint in the universe has value, has a right to exist, and is not on trial. That said, we launch our investigation from a point that both accords with the feminist worldview and transcends it. Namely, the precept that feminism is the project to increase the power of women. Feminism is literally nothing if not the project to increase the power of women. It must be this if it is anything at all, and whatever you might add to this, it remains this at the very least. This is a universal crossroad of understanding which puts everybody on the same map. It is a consensus that nearly all would share, and it makes the best of starting points because, although it transcends the feminist worldview, it is not totally arbitrary or capricious. Once we have thoroughly understood that feminism is the project to increase the power of women, new panoramas will open to us. We will draw the necessary implications. The consequences will become evident, and this will push our understanding to a new level. To increase the power of women, as to increase the power of anything, means that women's power would grow by comparison to some other power. That is all it possibly could mean. But let us think further. The feminist project would be meaningless if female power did not grow by comparison to male power specifically. For if both men's and women's power should grow by comparison to some other power, the universe at large, let us say, then it would be human power which had augmented itself so that the limiting term women would be inappropriate and misleading nor would the term feminism be appropriate. We conclude that the heart of the feminist project is to grow female power by comparison to male power in particular. And, for want of contrary evidence, we conclude that this project has no proposed endpoint. We would await positive proof that it does, and would hold such proof to a high standard. Since the project to increase women's power has no proposed endpoint, it follows that women's power must sooner or later surpass men's, if it has not already done so, issuing in a state that may be termed female supremacy. We may define female supremacy as a situation where the controlling power in most areas of life is a female power and we are entitled to wonder if that would be a bad thing. Our answer hinges on the question of moral constraint. Absolute power would be arbitrary power, and being absolute would corrupt absolutely, which is to say that no morality would constrain it. And true female supremacy could be nothing short of absolute power, unconstrained by morality. Anything less would only be a stage along the road to supremacy, but not quite supremacy itself. In the final tally, any limit to the growth of female power would constrain female power to treat men arbitrarily, and this in turn 
would be a moral constraint because arbitrary power is nothing if not the power to disregard morality. So we must understand how the feminist project would stall out if it were bound by the requirement to treat men ethically. We must understand how this would set an absolute upper limit on how far the project could extend itself. Now, if one were determined to push the feminist project forward at all costs, one would need either to abandon all pretense of morality or make oneself the master of such pretense. Either method would give rise to a tangle of difficulties, both for the feminist operators and for the world at large. But try to imagine what the world in such a case would look like. This would not be difficult, since the elements of such a scenario are already present all around us. Imagination would hardly be necessary. You would need only to study the present world and draw the manifest conclusion. The pro-male community has studied the world in such a way for many years, and the accumulated wisdom of that community is an earthly power of serious weight. We may attach the accumulated wisdom of the pro-male community as a fund of empirical evidence to the analysis which our talk provides, and a combination of these two things will form a lens through which we may view the world and discern the truth. Yes, we truly believe that we've got feminism's number. Feminism can't get away, and eventually it will get tired and collapse because it will face a future of endless intellectual harassment. That is what the future holds for feminism. I don't envy feminism. Fiedelbogen out, 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 out.